Hi, my name is Jafari Store. You can call me Jeff, you can call me Jeffrey, you can call me Jafari. You can even call me Desiree because I'm working on that name for myself. Anyways, I'm here today with Larry um, Davison. He just saw that video uh, the, about the soul death. And I had a few questions for him. Um, Larry, is it okay if I ask you a few questions? Yes. Oh. Larry. You saw that video. Um, did it make sense to you? Was there anything about it that... Was there anything about that video that um, you had any questions about yourself? No. Um, I had a question for you. Um, do you know, is soul death right for you? Or um, is that not your thing? Good question. Do you need to think about this a little bit? Yeah, let's come back to that later. Okay. Um, can I help you decide if it was right for you or not? We can give it a try. I think I've already got an answer for you. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, but there's still between two people. Uh, are you saying that your soul is attached to someone else? At the time, she was only seven. I was eight. And that was your soulmate? The way you're making it out to sound. You're making that sound more... Um, that, actually, I have an explanation for that. All right. Yep. Do you have an explanation for it, Larry? No, not at this time. Do you mind listening to my explanation? Okay. Okay. Um... When your soul's attached to someone else, that really is your soul. That's not someone else. Wow. Um, down here in the simulated wor- uh, universes that we live in, and the specific one that we're in, um, we have a thing where we can um, not even remove, but kind of like siphon your soul into someone else. And usually, um, the the most popular way to um, to do that is to you know uh, separate your head, the head part of your soul, from your body part of your soul, and your sec the second person that your soul's in is the body part of your soul. Usually, for you, it is. I can I can see that actually, um, that you're you're in the head. Now that's for the um, effeminate, your effeminate love uh, interest person. Um, you I can see that you're a masculine. Did you know that? No, I did not. You know how I know that? You probably studied up on it. I did. I really did. Um. You can see with me, I'm, I'm pretty much effeminate. My, my soul in my head is kind of flowy. It's not really fixed. And yours is kind of stone, like, just kind of fixed in one position, like, pretty intense looking. Now, if you look at the back of your head, your, the back of your head might look like the front of mine. And my back might look, here, let me give you an example of the back of mine. Now that might look like Larry's front. Whether it does or doesn't, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, maybe I'll take a look at this video. Um, Larry, there's some more um, indications of how you're emasculate. There's plenty of indications. You can, you can search for them on your own. Um, you need a guide. A good guide of whether or not you have first step to decide whether or not you're a masculine or a feminine. Most of feminines will be interested in um, this. Uh, I can give you one indication now. The masculine person is more interested in a career and what what um, their career title is, like a captain or ma- or. Um, king or a 
or something like that, how they are seen in public. And then the effeminate will be more interested in how they're seen as um, if as their soul is in a sexual nature, as in like f- effeminate or a masculine. Larry, do you feel that way about yourself? Uh, how do you feel? Are you more interested in being a masculine or are you more interested in being a king or a queen? I love the fear. Alright, I sense, I sense that you're more interested in being a king or a queen. Now, um, whether or not that's true, Larry has yet to divulge. And when Larry's ready, I'm sure he'll say. Now, Larry, I had a few more questions for you, and I'm going to try to cut this short. Because I can tell you're, you have some things that you want to say, and they're probably not about this. Right. Um, Larry... There's plenty of other ways to tell whether you're masculine or feminine. Now, if you're a masculine, that means soul death's not for you. Um, most, most, mostly. And that's one of the masculine, effeminate um, indicators also. Um, that means your whole soul, no matter what, if you're in a female body or a male body, you're still a masculine. That means you know how to be a man a lot better than you know how to be a woman. Your, your soul just knows. It naturally knows. And, um, and, and not only does it know, it acts it that, that way too. Now they've got all kinds of technology to mask these things. And I'm sure um, they're, the, some are secret, but most are just a nuisance to me because I'm a feminine and it, and it ruins the whole my whole, you know, what I'm going for, um, trying to prove that I'm effeminate, and then someone comes along and masks it for me, and then that ruins everything for me, and, you know, it just makes me want to get them back, and, you know, just totally, I mean, someday I'm going to get a sex change, I'm a male right now, in a male's body, and um, I do plan on getting a sex change. Um, Larry, how do you feel about sex changes? Do you want it's me to ask you that? It's up to the individual. You have a, 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 a family member that had a sex change, is that correct? Yes. Now, do you know, it, does, she, does she have the... Um, um, does, what parts does she, did she get? What, just the vagina or... The breast mostly. Breast mostly. She still has a penis. Yeah, I haven't quite figured out how to. Uh, now that's not completely true. I have heard that they do have the vaginas figured out, but not not a perfect vagina. But now, still. Now if she wants a perfect vagina. That that's going to be complicated. Now I've also heard other things, but anyways, this is about soul death. I know you're dead. He doesn't understand soul death. Now, do you know where your effeminate um, love um, is? Nope. From your um, your soulmate, who is not your soul, the, that part of your soul. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you know her? Nope. You haven't met her yet. She must be very busy right now. If, she, if you haven't met her, people get busy sometimes, Larry. You'll you'll meet her eventually. You, um, you say that you haven't had any, you haven't been married or had a girlfriend your whole life. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you believe that, um, that's going to help you in the long run? All right. Maybe? Maybe. Is it okay that I share that with people? That's okay. I think, I think if, if I were you, I'd be proud of that. I'm trying to figure out the stage, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like Larry's about done talking. Um, thank you very much, Larry, for sharing that with uh, right. sharing with us today. And um, I guess I'm gonna watch this video and make sure it, it turns out all right. So, is there any last words you have? No. Nope. <laughs> all right, that's Larry Davison, everybody. And he lives with me in this group home that we're in, um, 
Cedarvale, Kansas. A little town that has a grocery store and a, a gas station. And a library and a school and a few churches. It's a pretty small town. Anyways, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like and comment below. Mm-hmm. <laughs>